It is in the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, amen, that we find ourselves today, our key verse coming, amen, from the 11th and 12th verses, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and so uh, God is giving us a word today that, amen, is going to bless our lives and bless our walk and our talk with him. He sends his word. My, my job as a, a, a preacher is just like that keyboard and that drums. Amen. What are they, oh, y'all hear them? Listen. Y'all listen. Y'all hear nothing? Because nobody's on there. Right? Hallelujah. Nobody playing. I'm putting the mic over here. Hold on. Let me check. All right, real quick. I don't hear anything. Amen. I don't hear anything. And that's how we are supposed to be. We are God's instrument to be used of him. And if he ain't using us, we should be like this. That's exactly what we, people should hear. Sometimes, even with these conversations and stuff, what goes on in our lives, amen, silence is golden, amen? Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And so, amen, I'm just an instrument to be used of God, amen. And he has told me to, amen, share the word with you, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. High time, hallelujah. It is high time to wake up, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is high time. Hey, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise off that. Hallelujah. It is high time for us to awake out of sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before we go down to the, amen, hallelujah, 11th verse, we're going to walk down there. Amen. Hallelujah. From the first verse. If you have Romans 13 and 1, say amen. Amen. Let every soul be subject unto, hallelujah, the higher powers. For there is no power, somebody say no power, power. but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. That's that's a whole message all by itself. Hallelujah. That's a seminar all by itself. Hallelujah. If we could just understand that every soul, every body, every person, every believer in this particular case be subject unto the higher powers, the the people that God has placed us over uh, and placed over us, amen, to serve us. Amen. We, we give the position and we get it backwards sometimes. And that's why churches are so messed up in a lot of situations because, amen, Ephesians 4 tells us he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some evangelists, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. So the leaders, the pastors, the teachers, the prophets, everybody, we are here for the people. But we turn it around and we make everything about the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, and about the pre- and when it, it should never be that way. We should be serving you. You should be serving us. Amen. Hallelujah. How, technically, as, as the Bible has written it, we are here to serve you. Amen. And, and it's your responsibility to take care of the pastors and the teachers and the, you know, not to serve us as far as be uh, uh, under us as slaves, but to serve us as in render unto him which is due. We're about to get into that in a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, Amen. Let every soul, let all of us be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power. If you get that, I can sit down right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Pastor, I get it. Hallelujah. 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 There is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Everybody God has placed in in offices and doing the will of God are sent by God to do the will of God. If they're not doing the will of God, they're not sent by God. Uh, the late great Bishop Smalley Williams said, amen, the, the preacher, he heard, he heard plow instead of preach. Hallelujah. He thought God said go preach, but God said go plow. And he didn't know the difference. Amen. Hallelujah. So anybody that's doing the will of God is sent by God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. For the, for the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinances of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Amen. Condemnation comes that when we resist, amen, the very office that God has placed over us and the officers that he has placed over us. God has a rank and file. He has, amen, a pecking order. He has, 
amen, divine order where he wants his people, amen, to work with, amen, other people. Jethro told Moses, what you're doing is not good. You need to set some deacons. You need somebody to set over the thousands, amen, that they may minister and do the things that need to be done for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so God is saying he placing people in order and ordained them to be in, the, in that order to help the people come up and be what God called for them to be in these last and evil days. So whosoever resists those powers, resistance what God has set up. When you say, I'm not the pastor, I'm not the leader, I'm not the club president, I'm not this person, when God has placed that person in position, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You saying that God has made a mistake. God was wrong. Hallelujah. And so therefore, when we honor the people God has placed before us as sent from God, then hallelujah, God can get, amen, the glory out of our lives. And they that resist shall receive to themselves uh, damnation. That's what condemnation comes from, rejection of God and who God has sent. Hallelujah. We need to obey, amen, hallelujah, and acknowledge who God has sent. Amen. And honor them. For rulers are not a terror to do good works. Amen. But to but to the evil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You should not be afraid unless you're doing evil. In other words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. I just said that. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We will honor you because you're doing good in God. And God is doing good in you because you're doing good in God. You're sent from God, doing the will of God. And you're not rejecting not only God, but whom God has sent. Lord, that's another amen. I think I'm preaching that now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We reject. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only God, but whom God has sent. Because they come from God. They speak God's words. They talk God's language. I tell y'all, when couples come to me and they say, amen, we need to have a meeting, Pastor. Hallelujah. We need to have a little talk. And you need to tell him this, then that, and that, and that. And then he says, you need to tell her this, that, and that. And I say, I'm not saying either one of them. Hallelujah. Because y'all called me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for a different perspective. And if I told her what he said, she has already heard that for the last six months. Hallelujah. So the minute I say it, he know where it's coming from. Hallelujah. And vice versa. Versa. Hallelujah. If I said to him what she said for the last six months and both of them be shut down and y'all right back where you was. Hallelujah. Before y'all called me and said, let's have a meeting, Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you want, a, you want another perspective. Hallelujah. You need some advice. Amen. You need some counseling. Hallelujah. You don't need to have the same argument over and over and over again. We're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come short of the glory of God. We're going to have the same struggle over and over again. We go through the same cycle of serving God and failing God. Serving God and failing God, serving God and failing God. Hallelujah. So why do I come to God and do have the same conversation? Hallelujah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Break every yoke. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need this to end now. I need the power of God. Hallelujah. To rest in my life. I need deliverance. I need salvation. I need the power of God to move. How many need some change broken? Hallelujah. How many need deliverance and healing and blessings from God? How many tired of that cycle of, amen, serving God and failing God? Serving God and failing God over and over again. How, how many times do I go against your will? Still you forgive me, but yet I still turn around and do the things, the things I used to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, but I belong to you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You're calling my name, God. Hallelujah, to come into your arms. Oh, God, thank you. How many times do we fail? Hallelujah, but yet he's still. Hallelujah, Lord, I've sinned. Hallelujah, but yet you're still calling. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, I've sinned. But you're still calling my name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do that which is good. And you will have praise of the same. For verse says, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou, uh, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Hallelujah. For he bear not the sword in vain. Hallelujah. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's a true pastor. That's a true leader. Hallelujah. When he tell you when you're wrong. I go to preachers conference all the time. They say, amen. And even in the secular world, when I was managing restaurants and hotels and different things, they would say the mark of a good manager is when, they, when they're gone and how people will respond in that. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and they tell us the mark of a good pastor or good members is that they can stand correction. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They can say, yes, pastor. Okay, pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they'll give you three re reasons why they don't, they're not going to do what you said. Hallelujah. And not only I'm going to say no, but I'm going to give you three reasons why I'm saying no. Hallelujah. It, isn't that something? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But God says, hallelujah, for he is a minister. The fourth verse, hallelujah, Romans 13. Hallelujah. He is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Be very afraid. Hallelujah. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but, but for conscience sake. Amen. Like I said, repeating the same thing over again. Amen. Walking in the will of God. Walking in God's purpose. Walking and you see your destiny. Hallelujah. Right there before you. And here comes the devil sending some attacks and sending, amen, demons and everything to attack you, to take you off course, to take you, amen, from your deliverance and your blessing. Because the Bible says, for the joy that, I'm preaching already, y'all ain't, amen, y'all just ain't caught up yet. Hallelujah. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despite the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's running from them at Capernaum. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They wanted to stone him. Hallelujah. The scribes and Pharisees always asking him questions. Hallelujah. But when he, amen, endured the cross. He said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He had the authority to say, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. You don't know what authority you're going to have after you come through what you come through. After the level God brings you to. He wants to bring you to a level in when the devil shows up, you can cast out the devil. Hallelujah. You can heal all manner of sickness and disease. You can walk into that house. That house is pure and clean. Hallelujah. He wants you to have deliverance on your job. He might even want you to win that boss. Hallelujah. He might have, he has a work for you to do. Hallelujah. But when you're struggling with sin uh -oh. and unrighteousness and walking outside of the will of God, you're not going to rebuke anything because you're scared it might jump out of you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says if you're willing and obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. If you rebuke and rebel, you shall be devoured. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's no good thing in the flesh, saints. Hallelujah. There's nothing good. Satan has nothing good for you. Hallelujah. You tell that young lady, that boy coming on that motorcycle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looking like a mess. Hallelujah. And you say to, you say to that baby, no, go out with that boy. Hallelujah. 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 I, I like him. I, don't go out with him. Hallelujah. He don't mean you no good. Hallelujah. 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 Because you have wisdom. You have knowledge. You might have been that boy. Hallelujah. You might have hung out with one. You might have hung out with his uncle or his daddy. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know what happened. Hallelujah. And you're warning them and you're warning them. Hallelujah. But all they see, like James said, hallelujah. The lust of the eye. Hallelujah. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you run into a mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what the devil do. Do y'all have a, do y'all see, it seems to me that it seems like everybody's like, not everybody, but a lot of people are caught up in the soap opera of their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, hallelujah, that we have left the gospel and have turned to fables. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about one life to live in general hospital of Luke and Laura and all that. Hallelujah. I'm not talking. Yeah, that means I watched it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That don't mean that. It, it, it means, amen, that, that the thing Things that the Satan is sending to us are distractions from our purpose. God has a place he wants us to go. He has a, a person in him that he wants us to be. A, a soldier, an a, a elder. I talk about elder being ordained and knowing and ha having the ability to run the church and, and work with the pastor and work with the leaders. Every elder is not called to go out and pastor. Some are called to work within the church. Amen. But an elder, you're supposed to know. A minister? No, we, we, you know, you on the journey. Hallelujah. You're learning. Hallelujah. But the elder? Yes, you're supposed to know. A prophet? You ain't supposed to know nothing. Hallelujah. You don't have to know scriptures. Hallelujah. Because the only thing a prophet's supposed to do is say what God is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And an evangelist, hallelujah. You need to know the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't be stuck. Amen. You can't be still. Hallelujah. You should have some, a clothes packed and ready in your briefcase. Amen. Sitting in your trunk sometime. Because at any time, God can say, go over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's an evangelist. You need to go. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, a teacher, you got to know. Hallelujah. Because you're teaching everybody. And you can't teach what you don't know. Hallelujah. And pastor, you're stable. You're secure. You're a nurturer. Hallelujah. You're a builder. Hallelujah. How do you like to parent? I told, uh, I was at Antioch and the, and the child was acting up and in the, in the, in the usher kept telling him, sit down. And he got running around. I said, boy, go sit down. And he went over there and sat down and didn't move. And she came to me after the service. She said, why did he do when you do it? He didn't do what I do. I said, when you talking to him, you talking to him like an adult to a child. You're a child, I'm an adult, do it. I say, obey me, go sit down. And I'm talking to him as a friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not condescending. Amen. And not being condescending. Amen. To him. Amen. So he went over there and sat down. And also he'll see me at the service. You know. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And how you approach things. Amen. And it's the will of God working in you. Amen. Hallelujah. According to the will of God. Do you know how many people God has set for you to win for the kingdom of Christ? Hallelujah. And we're still playing with the devil and wrestling with ourselves and our mentality and what we want to do and what God. Now, that's all right if you just got saved, amen, last week or last month. Hallelujah. Because you're, you're, you're transitioning, amen, from the world to being a child of God. Hallelujah. But if you in Christ, you're a new creature. All things have passed away. At some point, hallelujah, we should get this. Hallelujah. And not get caught up in the suffering of our lives. Hallelujah. And give our life to Christ. If you give it to him, give it. he said, cast all your cares upon me. Ah, oh, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, for he careth for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Romans 13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are in the fourth verse. Let's go to the fifth verse. How can you say, wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but for consciousness. Not because you're going to get punished. Amen. I told y'all we, we had to take uh, food management class when we worked at restaurants. We All the cooks and chefs and everybody had to go down there to the uh, the health department and take uh, food handling class and no times and temperatures and how you're supposed to cook food and everything. And the first class, the, 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 the teacher, she said, I know you guys are here for your certificate, but you need to learn what we're teaching you here today. She said, because an ambulance in front of your restaurant is not good advertising. Hallelujah. So you need to learn this. Hallelujah. For the benefit of your customers and yourself, not just because you want a certificate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is what Jesus was talking about. This is what Paul was telling the church at Rome. It's not only because of wrath. Hallelujah. But for conscience sake, to have peace of mind. Don't you have great peace when you're walking with Jesus and you're, you're meditating on the Lord? Hallelujah. Aren't you having great peace and love? Some of my best moments is with nobody else but me and Jesus. Having a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about my troubles. Hallelujah. Just talking with him and walking with him and learning more about him. Hallelujah. Every day. Personal time with Jesus. Hallelujah. It's better. Amen. Then the wrath of Christ and being worried, what's it going to kill me? Or is this, what's this, everything, little hurt thing? You, you think it's something wrong because of you, what you're doing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Serving the Lord is, is, is good even for your conscience. The sixth verse. For this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear. And that means reverence. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of it. It means reverence to them. Amen. Honor to whom honor is due. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In other words, I, I was, uh, we went to see Dr. Ashby. Amen. And I was telling him uh, over there at the school, some of those teachers had a bunch of nonsense. Hallelujah. Talking nonsense. Amen. But Dr. Harris, he reminded me of. And a couple of other teachers. Amen. They, 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 they was just so knowledgeable in the word of God that it far outweighed all those ones that, amen, we went to class and one teacher, she wanted to have service every class. Amen. And you had, a, you had apostolic and Methodist and Presbyterian and Baptist and put them all in a circle. So you know they're trying to outdo one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She wanted to have church. And I went to, I said, I'm not here to have church. I'm here to learn. Hallelujah. God's word. And we spent half the class praying. Amen. And she wanted to go praise and all. I said, we do that back at the church. Amen. I, I, just, at Antioch, I, said, we can, I know how to praise the Lord. I've come to learn what you have to teach. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But the teachers that knew their stuff, amen, she, she had a problem with uh, understanding a text, amen, and, and so she called Dr. Harrison, and Dr. Harris came in, and he said, y'all close y'all book, because I am the book. Hallelujah. I thought he was arrogant and facetious. Amen. Hallelujah. But he told the truth. Amen. He got that piece of chalk, and you know them colleges, they have the big 10-footers, amen, the chalkboards, and he, they had three. And he took up at least two and a half, almost three of them, breaking down that concept that she couldn't figure out. And I'm just sitting there like a sponge. I'm saying, man, this is good. I said, what class do you teach? I want, <laughs> I want to get to his class. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when, when, when we work and we walk with God, amen, he has volumes, amen, that he wants to do through us. He has, he has a Ph.D. In, in Christian living that he wants to apply to our lives. But we're still in kindergarten, finger painting, hot and playing with blocks. You understand what I'm saying? We're living far beneath our privilege. Hallelujah. Because we're giving Satan too much privilege. Hallelujah. We're giving the flesh too much privilege. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. He said, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us that we may what? Run with patience the race. The old folks didn't know all that. They just said, I got a race to run. Hallelujah. And I'm running by faith. At the finishing line, hallelujah, I'll see God's face. It said, if you can help me, please don't stop me. Hallelujah. Move out. Don't try to block me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those songs will get you saved, man. Watch out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we render. We, we give them their due. Those that, are, those that are doing it, amen, for, for the cause of Christ, we give them their due. Amen. Eight verses, owe no man anything. In other words, give them their due. You don't owe. That has nothing to do with money. How it does with, with giving the honor, giving respect, giving reverence. Hallelujah. Giving, showing love. Hallelujah. No, no, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another have fulfilled the law. Jesus, that's another message for another day. That's another half an hour. Hallelujah. But we just show the love. We fulfill what we're supposed to be doing as believers and Christians. Amen. Walking up right before the Lord and doing what's pleasing in his sight. For there, for this, thou shalt not what commit adultery, shall not kill, steal. Hallelujah. Bear false witness, covet. Hallelujah. If there be any commandment, hallelujah, it is briefly comprehended. Hallelujah. In this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In other words, have the love of God in you, and you'll treat somebody. It's not like a selfish love, like loving myself. Amen. Um, I'm taking some classes on Hebrew language and how it's written, and so it, it, he, the guy was talking about how the first word is talking about loving one another and how when you love one another, love each other, it's like you loving yourself. You give them enough of yourself that they become like you. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what it's basically saying, that, it, that I'm giving you so much of me that you know me because of my love for you, not because of the contention and, and all the other stuff where we disagree. But, but they love you and they know you and they know your love because what you, what you, the, pres the presence you give, the love you show, amen, toward another person. Hallelujah. So that's what it's talking about when saying love somebody like yourself. Amen. Not a selfish love, hallelujah, but a love that's giving. And they know your love because they know the purity and, and the grace in your love. Hallelujah. Thank you. Love worketh no ill, the 10th verse. Hallelujah to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law, the 11th verse. And knowing, this is our key verse, 11 and 12. And, and, and that, knowing the time, hallelujah, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we, we believe. Hallelujah. The night is far spent, saints. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We come short of the glory of God. We lived in darkness. We were born in darkness. But when the light of God came into our lives, the Bible says the light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. It could not hinder the light of God. We've been serving darkness too long. We've been serving Satan too long. It is time for the light of God. Hallelujah. Knowing the time, knowing what we're going through, knowing the time that we're wasting, all the souls that could be reached 
all the lives that you could be touched, all the people, the people in the old folks' homes, people that are in the hospitals, those that are in the prison wars, those that are hungry, living in shelters and living in the woods. Hallelujah. All the people, all the lives that we, those that are going to hell because we won't share the, the salvation, hallelujah, of, of Jesus Christ, the, the blood of Jesus that shed his blood for the, for the sins of the world. All those times of being, knowing the time, it is high time. It's past time. We've been asleep too long. We've been unconscious when you sleep. Some folk, hallelujah, lose consciousness. And you're in another world. We, we living in the fantasy world. Hallelujah. We're dreaming a dream about whatever it may be. And it's, Satan don't care what it is. It could be art supplies. It could be driving your car. It could be whatever the dream. He'll send you that dream. Hallelujah. That dream, that life dream, that life goal. This is what I think I should be. This is what I think I should be doing. But in the Bible says, seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. But Satan wants you to bow down to him. He says, Jesus, bow down to me. And I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. It, 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 when the earth is the Lord, how can he do that? Because they were unrighteous kings, unrighteous leaders. And so, Jesus, if you bow down to me now, you don't have to die on the cross. I'll give this whole world to you. I'll give it to you. Everybody that's serving me, I'll give to you. But you have to bow down. Hallelujah. And it's temptation. It's not temptation unless, you, you know, it's, 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 you want to do it. Hallelujah. And it's, and it's tempting to you. So he tempted Jesus, amen, with what his purpose was, to die for the sins of the world. And that's what he comes with. Amen. He comes with your purpose, but he has a twist to it. Hallelujah. 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 Bishop Roberts used to say that the decoy always come before the real thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you, you got to be careful about things that are being presented to you. He said, try the spirits by the spirits and see whether they are of God. Amen. And so if it's not of God, I said, no, I'm sorry. But all you have to do, this is all, it's, this is easy. There's no, just, just do, and, and it's, it's done. You have everything you need, everything you ask for. You got that right. And you're going to have a whole lot of stuff you didn't ask for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to have everything you ask for, but some more stuff. You're going to have Satan. You're going to have the devil with that. Hallelujah. Knowing the time, saints. It is high time to wake up. The night is far spent. We've been wasting too much time. The day is at hand. Need, we need to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Paul told them, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God wherewith you be able to stand against, against the wiles of the devil and have it in all to stand. Ha, <sighs> oh, God. That's the opposite of somebody that's wavering and, and, and inconsistent with God. Hallelujah. And unsure with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're able to stand as a soldier of the king. Helmet of salvation. You got to, you got to, you got to save. God save you by his power divine. You got the sword, the word, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. You got your loins girt about you in truth. Hallelujah. Feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your shield of faith, wherewith you be able to, to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. Hallelujah. And all of these weapons are here just to show that I am his. Hallelujah. I'm God's. Hallelujah. You know, you can tell a soldier by what the uniform look like. You can tell the Marines by what they're wearing. You can tell the Army. Hallelujah. The Navy. Hallelujah. They wear a different song. They have different song, battle songs. Hallelujah. You know them by how they look. Hallelujah. We can tell the difference. Hallelujah. That we, you in a different army. So those that are in the army of the Lord can tell the difference. Lord Jesus. You can see the difference. You can you can hear the difference. Hallelujah. That's why I'm, the, 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 the joy, the most joy I get out of being a pastor is seeing how God change somebody's life. Hallelujah. How they see how they look different. Hallelujah. How they talking different. Hallelujah. And they sharing God's word. Hallelujah. They, ain't, they don't preach like Paul. They don't say it like somebody else might say it. Hallelujah. They ain't running around shaking the mic. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But they're sharing Jesus. And they're sharing the power of God working down on the inside of their soul. And it's nothing better. It's time for us. And knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. It's here. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The day you hear my voice, harden not your neck. Hallelujah. Thank you. Harden not your heart. Stiffen not your neck as he did in the day of provocation. But submit yourself. Aren't we so easy and so willing to submit ourselves to the Lord? Hallelujah. But we, and I'm not saying, I say this as a preacher, as a deacon, as a brother. Hallelujah. But we, we will not submit ourselves to people. I, and I kind of understand it because I have trust issues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll wait on a dog. Hallelujah. Before I, I could wait on a person. Y'all might sit different now. He passed. You'll sit in the car. No, but that, that was, Lord, I've come a long way by faith. Hallelujah. The Lord has blessed me. Hallelujah. Because something about the human being. Hallelujah. So fickle and can do anything. Hallelujah. And so to sit there and wait on another human. I had a serious issue with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it be anywhere doing anything. You sitting there, hallelujah, waiting for folk day in there playing video games or something. You don't, you never know. Hallelujah. But the Lord dealt with me with that. Amen. Hallelujah. But we don't, we don't want to submit ourselves to people. Hallelujah. Because people are frail. And yes, you should try the spirits by the spirit. Amen. And you should be careful who you subject yourself to. Amen. But we tell wives and husbands to subject themselves to each other. Hallelujah. We, you, you go on that boss, you go to that boss because you're getting a check. Hallelujah. And you'll do pretty much anything they say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll do everything they say within the parameters of your job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But if the leader says something, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. But we just learned here, amen, that the souls are subject to the higher powers. And the powers that be are ordained of God. Hallelujah. And we need to not resist those powers and those ordinances. But we need to line up with God's word. This is what Paul said. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. Whoa. Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invite you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Budenite Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.